What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Awake and Sober Podcast, a podcast about life and recovery through Christ. Amen. I like that. That emphasis. was that was really really good. It was, it was right, good, wasn't it? Yeah. Some big emphasis, emphasis on Christ. Christ. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You Thank did you. it. So that this is the uh, third time's a charm. This is only second. Second. Well, technically, we had to start over the last one. This is true. Oh, okay. So we'll, we'll go with third for third a copy co- for a copyright infringement. Yeah, I mean, we might so, as well go through. So let's make sure record. Everything's recording. record. Okay. And everything else. Okay. Red, red, red. Perfect. We're good. Everything's red. Is Perfect. this good? We're good. <laughs> no. That's always good. <laughs> what uh, what what was that new nickname for Mike that you came up with? Bonk. 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 The old Bonk. video game. So we'll throw that. Yeah. That big. Yeah. Just for people who watch, can you give me your hat for a second? Oh man. Yeah. One moment. So folks. so this is if you do not watch the show, this would be the time to maybe turn it on. It literally goes down over my ears, Michael. I have an incredibly large head. Is what's wild is you're a big dude. It looks like you would have the big it's, head. Exactly. So either you got a little peanut head like the you do the head shrinker. I'm, on a, I'm like seven and a, like a seven and a quarter or seven and a half. This is a seven and three quarters. You got a big head. And it's still tight. I was thinking it was like an eight. It should be. I probably he should. said it's tight. It's tight. I should have got an eight. <laughs> Let me get this thing back on. Wow. Uh, the so, conversation at yes. the very beginning. That's what happens when we film in the evening. Yes, yes. It's, it's weird doing this during the week. Uh, we are going to be talking a little bit about uh, arrested development today and recovery, um, just so you know where we're at. But how is your week going so far, gentlemen? Uh, very, very well. Um, after So we tried this on Sunday, and then I ended up taking two days off for myself, which was really, really awesome. Uh, Monday. I didn't do anything, um, and I can't pref- like specify enough how little I did. Like, I literally did nothing. And then uh, Tuesday, uh, yesterday, went golfing in the morning. No. Yeah, no, I yeah. I was going to play Monday, too, but I said, yeah. So I uh, played yesterday and then um, had a had some uh, a therapy session, which went really well. And then I was actually supposed to go see the cardiologist. Because of my heart, because my uncle passed away, away a couple of weeks ago and um, found out I have some family um, issues with heart problems. And so I got to the cardiologist and turns out my appointment was at two and I got there at 220. So I had to reschedule for another two weeks out. I thought it was going to be eight months. I know. That's all right. So two weeks isn't bad. So two weeks isn't bad. No. And then I almost gave myself a heart attack with how hard I was screaming when I was leaving those doors. I was so upset. Not at, at yourself not, or at, not them? at them? Oh, at me. <clears throat> okay. I think I called myself an idiot quite a few times. Yeah. But then I got in my car and I, I screamed one last time and I said, hey, it is what it is. So the self-affirmation was not no. too good that day. <laughs> no. no. <clears throat> and then I ended up going and doing some work at my Duck Lake last night. So I got one full day off and then I ended up having to do some stuff yesterday. So, But other than that, back to work today. Uh, did some painting, was outside all day. It was a beautiful day. Um, and then doing some painting tomorrow. So, yeah, life is good, man. Life is good. Yeah, I walked outside with a jacket this morning. Yeah. Had a meeting with a, an attorney at 8 a.m. And I don't re- usually do 8 a.m. It just don't happen on, on my schedule. But went to breakfast, had some great tacos. Breakfast tacos? Yeah. Where'd Village Cafe. Oh. Oh, the one over here? Yeah, they're, they're breakfast tacos. I either get the breakfast tacos or the haystack. Neither one of them can you go wrong. Okay. Yeah, but they're tacos. Tim, the guy I met with, was sweating. I mean, <laughs> he was sweating. Because they, they come jalapenos and some jalapeno yeah. sauce and some other stuff. It was great. Nice. He's in there just, I said, I told you they were a little warm, a little spicy. <laughs> but, yeah, man, it's been, a, it's been a good week. It's been a very productive week. We are over cleaning the building out today. Um, getting more stuff. And I, I turned around to Steve and I said, why did we even do what we did before? We were deck scrubbing this floor just to have it filthy yeah, 10 more it. times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it gave us something to do, yeah. right? So, um, And what's going in there? What, what are we talking about? So Reclaiming Hope will be moving uh, in. Um, we're hoping to put a schedule out by the end of this month. That way everybody will know when the doors are actually open and we're there. We're always available but open hours for people to walk into into the doors of. And right now they could check us out online, right? 
Reclaiming Reclaiming Hope. Reclaiminghope-mo.org. There you go. Awesome. I hate that it's such a long website, but... Uh, Yeah. And if people have questions or want to reach out to us, how do they do that? Um, Info. Call Tyrone. Oh, (laughs) info info at (laughs) awakensober.org. That's info at awakensober.org. I just love that song. Better call Tyrone. (laughs) Oh my God! For a second, I was like, "Who the heck is Tyrone?" Who's Tyrone, <laughs> it's jeez, man, it's it's a great song. Yes. You better call Tyrone. Yes. So, how are you doing? Yeah, man, I'm good. Thanks. We're yeah, that ain't gonna work. Develop- Neat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm good. I you know it's funny you were talking about health issues, Mike, and uh, um. I found out that I'm going to have to have a colonoscopy. Ain't never had one of those. Really? Yeah. So similar to you, uh, somebody who gave me birth uh, recently had one, Mm -hmm. and they found some polyps. And so I guess once you find that, you're supposed to go get checked out. So looking forward to that. Thanks a lot, Mom. Yeah. So are they going to do... Both sides? Usually when they go in, they just do both at once. What are you talking about? A colonoscopy and an endoscopy. So that way, in through your throat to check out all oh, the things. I was... <laughs> me? Yeah. I, would, I didn't know where to go. <laughs> That's, I, you, I had you, no you idea. So, <laughs> like, so let me let me help you guys out. <laughs> You're like a pig Awaken on a was sober. <laughs> First Thessalonians 5, 6 through 8. We're not going to be talking about the other. This is not that show. Okay. That's you, next week's show. You need to turn in, tune into a different show for that. I'm <laughs> yeah. sure they're out there. <laughs> this we're going to talk a little bit about Jesus. Yeah, okay. Recovery in Jesus. Recovery in Jesus. Not, Not where your head went. Yeah. Sicko. So Arrested Development. When individuals start using in their teens, their brain changes shape and the cortex thins, the part of the brain associated with higher level functioning. As a result, the brain becomes stuck at the same level of maturity it was in when drug use began, a term known as arrested development. Arrested. Not the band. Or the show. Or the show, which both are great. Mm -hmm. So how do individuals get to the place where they are stuck emotionally? Well, for starters, I feel like no one has ever taught how to deal with emotions. Uh, especially from a very young age, you know, it's so for like, for me personally, when I showed emotions, uh, I have two older brothers and a lot of the times it was shut up. Don't be a baby. Right. So that was years and years of that. So when I got to be older, say, you know, middle teens to late teens, early twenties, when I wanted to show emotion, typically I couldn't, because I had so much time of don't show your emotion or the only emotion that is acceptable is anger. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's very, it was very hard and still is hard. I'm, I just turned 34 and I have a hard time showing emotions unless it is something. I just turned 34. Oh, I am. My bad. Me too. Yeah. Me too. And I can't grow a beard. Are you going to talk about that too? I was you, you brought. Well, we up. weren't going to, but yeah. now that you mention it, I figured I'd, I'd <laughs> tap the king. I mean, now we're not. He can't grow a beard. Oh, now you just and he's got somebody. a big head. Sorry, but uh, no. So I and I, and I've talked about this with my therapist. It's like I even at the my my uncle's funeral, which I was I wasn't greatly close to him, but I was I was kind of close to him, and I I felt tears coming. And I didn't express them. You know, I didn't let them go. Mm-hmm. And I, it's funny because I looked right at my brother and I was like, oh, God, I hope he doesn't see me. You know? So it's just it's just difficult for me to show emotion sometimes. I'm getting better at it. Um, but, yeah, it's it goes back to that arrested development to where it's like I was never properly shown or, honestly, a lot of the times allowed to show emotion. Mm. I was just thinking through that aloud, but yeah, I, I could see it in some families how they wouldn't allow you to do so. So for me, it was a trauma mm-hmm. going back to years of sexual abuse that happened. Um, and then for others, 
when they start drinking. Or using. Or using, yeah. Yeah, for me, it was drinking first. That's what I always associate. I, I know a lot of people drink first, but nowadays it seems like a lot of people smoke first. I did. Yes. <laughs> that was Make funny. Sure. It was just, Make sure are are you still alive? Are you still yeah, with us? He's over, he's over there. <laughs> and there's, what's funny is I'm not moving any of the cameras until later. So, I mean, everything's yeah, oh, yeah. just on him. <laughs> it's great. It's his melon. So you, you mentioned trauma. Yeah. And we've all experienced trauma in our lives. And I think most have, if they get honest. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Yes. Um, anything traumatic or anything that, you know, anything that changes your, like, so a struggle, like, a, over a period of time. Mm -hmm. So the example I was given was um, if you grow up poor and you don't have a lot of food, right? So you're yeah. scraping by and just barely getting, you know, you're eating hot dog soup, you know, and in there. Um you're eating hot dog soup, and so you learn this survival technique of you you'll you hold on to everything almost like a hoarder, right? Mm -hmm. And that's just the way they react. What happens, especially with with those in addiction or in recovery, when we start to get sober, we don't we don't think about the fact that our our frontal cortex, which is responsible for pretty much all of our cognitive <clears throat> thinking, you know, muscle memory, um, the reactions, the the emotions we don't realize that that's still messed up. And so when we respond to something like a trigger, we respond as we would when we started drinking. So react, react. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at 18 years old, if I, if, if I started drinking at 18 and I acted like a pissed off teenager mm -hmm. all the time when I became emotional, that's what's going to happen when I drink. Make sense. Yeah. That's why I sucked my thumb. Makes a lot of sense too because I was a. <laughs> That's why I sucked my thumb for so many years. It's me goes. That I started. Makes sense. <laughs> I, I don't know why it took me ten seconds. <laughs> but when I when I so I was like a really at the very end of me using. I was a very sad drunk. I was very depressed a lot. Mm. You know, so where does it cut off from? You know, that's the new stage of arrested development, or. Maybe was it just the years of using and drinking and drinking and drinking that turned me into that to where, you know, I didn't do that early on. Mm -hmm. I was a, I was a happy go lucky, you know, I was a social drinker at first. Right. So, but the trauma that happened to you over the years mm -hmm. was before you started drinking. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you're going to have possibly two different start in points. Yeah. I mean, by the time I started drinking, my brothers were out of the house and everything like that. So, yeah. So that because you had such space in between, even if you're starting to heal from the earlier, now you have right. the other that comes in and mm -hmm. you boogered yourself up pretty good. Sure did. <laughs> well, you didn't booger yourself up the first half. That was other people's fault, not yours. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't do myself any favors. Let's just say that. I was, uh, that's funny. It, 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 made me think of something. I was, I was meeting with one of my clients today and we were talking about a spouse and his spouse, a drinker. And he said to me, he goes, uh, well, I'm, I'm to blame for her drinking. One of those, huh? And I was like, you are. <laughs> so I said, who's to blame for your drinking then? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, who do you blame for your drinking? And he's like, Oh, <laughs> like the light bulb went off. <laughs> And I was like, dude, you can't control. If she's going to drink, she's going to drink. And it's not because of you. It's because she can't deal with that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's her coping mechanism. But it's not because of you that she drinks. Yeah. Just like it's not because of her that you drink. You know, it's 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 up and all up in here. You know, mm -hmm. it's just crazy. But so I can't blame somebody else. Oh, well, you can. You can do that all you want. I like the blame game. Yeah. How'd that work out for you? Very well. For how long? <laughs> Lots of divorces and <laughs> all kinds of things. It worked out really, really well. Long time. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Were you going to say something, Shane? No, I was just looking for something. Okay. Did you find it? Nope. Okay. So when a trauma impairs your ability to develop full emotional maturity, we already said this, this is known as your arrested psychological development. Um, it can come, like we said, from trauma, abuse, neglect, accidents, bullying is one of those, especially... Now, were you bullied as a kid? 
So I learned behavior. I was bullied at home, and then actually I was a bully at school. And I was really little, so I had little man syndrome. With a really big head. With a really giant. I was top See, head. if he would have just headbutted him, he would have won. <laughs> I, I thought about it. Um, <laughs> I was very top heavy as a child. Let's just say that. Um, but no, but I mean, I, I wouldn't say I was bullied, especially because my brothers went to the same schools that I did. So like, as soon as they left, it was like, oh, there's little Mikey or little Fowler. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I was, I hung out with the older crowd a lot and, um, but I was a bully in like grade school Mm -hmm. and even in early in high school, you know, because I just thought that that was normal. Right. I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So I dealt with it the only way I knew how. What about you, Shane? Was I bullied? Yeah. I beat up the bullies. Did you? Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, I didn't I didn't like bullies picking on people. So I protected the ones that couldn't protect themselves. Mm. Yeah. You know, I, I I remember growing up through grade school, I was bullied a lot because I was a big child. My mom called me husky or big boned. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, which fluffy. is nice for fat. Yeah, yeah, Fluff, it was very, fluffy. Yeah, it was fl- it was... no, I was never fluffy. That's <laughs> is that over the line? That's over the line. That that, that crosses <laughs> the line. So you know, my mom would say, "You're big bones." You know, yeah, yeah. like husky. But I'll, I'll never forget. Like I think it was between seventh and eighth grade. That summer, I like shot up, mm-hmm. and I slimmed down, and then I became bigger than everybody else, and mm-hmm. then nobody wanted to mess with Chuggalug anymore because that's what he used to call me. What was it? Chuggalug. Chuggalug. Chug-a-lug. Man, that's a good nickname. That was a good nickname. Yeah. That's pretty mean. Yeah, I agree. Why they called you Chug-a-lug? Because well, I drank a lot that's of milk. Chug a lug Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Choo-choo. And I ate were, a lot of food. Were you in the kid in the cafeteria drinking all the milk cartons? Grandma was the school cook. Oh, you got everything you wanted. Grandma was a lunch lady? She was the lunch <laughs> Yeah. And she couldn't let her little, her only grandchild get it. Makes get home, it makes sense. It makes so much sense now. <laughs> you didn't know that? No. no. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's why God. we love Grandma so much. Uh, she was a lunch lady. Yes. Yeah, that's, why, that's why her love language Shout is out food. to Grandma. We love you. <laughs> yes. yes. Goodness gracious. I miss, I miss Sundays at the Schwenker house. <laughs> the only thing I miss is Grandma's, Grandma's cooking. Yes. Grandma's yes. cooking. <laughs> I don't miss sitting up on the, the chairs that we had to sit in. Yeah. These are a lot more comfortable. These are a little bit more Absolutely. comfortable. So can you, either one of you, think of a time, you know, with 6.30? Can any of you think of a time where you respond back? Like, I know you kind of touched on a little bit, but recently in your recovery that you find yourself going back and be like, well, that was 18-year-old Mike or that was 12-year-old Shane. Because you started drinking when you were like two. Yeah. It wasn't my fault. Live in Germany. It's, a, it's Germany's fault. <laughs> Let's go back to the blame game. <laughs> it's Germany's fault. Yeah, all the time. It's it's weird that you could still, but you, it's great to notice it. Right. Um, and hopefully we notice it sooner than later. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I would say I can, I will still notice behaviors every once in a while. If, if me and Christina get into a little argument, oh boy. I'm like, um, all right, my bad. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Let me change this real quick. That's when I really notice mine. It's in those really intimate relationships that we have that yep. I respond like that. Mm-hmm. You know, the way I don't want to respond, <laughs> but that's all I've known. Emotionally? Yeah. So reaction again. Yeah, yeah reactionary. Yeah. 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 And it you, gets, go ahead. Do your thing. No, go ahead. Okay. When you do notice it, do you, do you say it out loud? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I just, because... I have to like, Oh, that, yeah, that's, that's me coming back. That's that, that's that, you know, maniacal other Mike that's coming back. See my, cause I still work on my pride and ego. I won't say it right then and there. It's one of those after I go away for a minute and I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, like I definitely owe an amends on this one. Right. You know, and it drives Amy nuts when I'm like, everything you're saying about me is correct. I don't want to be right. Well, you are like, I don't, I don't know. You don't dis- say it. Yeah. <laughs> right. like, I can't to, prove you wrong. <laughs> what do you want me to do here? I don't want you to be right. I just want you to change. It's like, I am. And that brings up my next point. It's going to, it takes, I mean, even though it's been several years since my last drink, those, and especially longer for you, Shane, those character defects or those emotions are still wanting to come out all the time. 
all the time. I mean, we had how many years in that versus how many years of sobriety? Right. And they say it's going to take over 10 years for your brain to truly heal itself mm -hmm. all the way, right? It could take 15 years. Um, for most, it's probably 10 or 12, mm -hmm. depending on the, the amounts and the drugs and everything else that's in there. But if you're talking 10 years to heal, how long have you been working recovery? Oh. How long have you been Solid. sober now? Yeah, almost two years. Uh, 20 months today. Actually. Well, then it sounds like we all have a little ways to go right. before the brain heals. So, I mean, we're going to run into it. And even afterwards, character defects are the hardest. Because mm -hmm. the things that cause all these character defects and that, that we use them to protect ourselves and everything else, those are our coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. They're ingrained in us more than our coping skills are. To the core. So it, it's going to be a while. So be patient. Mm -hmm. I mean, patience is going to be key. You got to have patience and grace with yourself. You Spouses have patience and grace with your loved one. Yes. And you got to have faith. Yeah. You know, little George Michael. Yeah. Because you got to have faith to be able to do it. Or Fred Durst. What's a Fred Durst? Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit. Yeah, I didn't listen. Yeah, that's fair. Limp Biscuit. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're kidding. Don't know where that came from. You wanna, it's, it's, it's a little Fred Durst. Yeah. So yeah, I, I when I was when I was still doing groups in my last role, I, I would tell people like how how I even asked that same question. How how long did you use? Be like, well, I've been using you know 20, 30, 40 years. I'm like, well, I'm glad you are getting into this now, but it's going to take a long, long, long time to not only change those, but to even recognize those character defects. Mm -hmm. Like I had 17 years, 17 years of active use, probably 10 of really, really hard use drinking and working with a therapist and a sponsor and, you know, working a good program. I get to call myself out on those or not even call myself out, but I get to be accountable for those actions. You know, those are, and I always say this, those are things that I did. That That's not who I was. They don't define you. They do not define me as a person. And I want to get that across. Like, we've all done really, really, some have done worse things than others, but that doesn't make, those aren't things that we, that's not who we are. Those are things that we've done. Right. Mm -hmm. So show yourself a little grace. Give yourself a little bit of forgiveness. Yeah, please do. Please do. I'm trying to think. I, I still beat up on myself sometimes. I'm like, man, I should know better. You know, um, mm -hmm. I've been doing this a long time. We teach this. We do this. I should know better. But what makes me any better? Nothing. Right. So, yes, should I know better? But I'm still working. I'm still, it's, the problem is if you don't do anything about it. That's where the problem comes in. Big time. Yeah. If you're like, well, if you don't like it, that's your problem. Yeah. And it's fun to say to somebody, but not to, to truly mean it. Yeah. You're like, look, I'm just playing. I, I need to take care of that. Yeah. And that's why I said, do you say it out loud? Yes. Because it's easier to change it once you've actually accepted it and acknowledge that it's a problem as opposed to just thinking on it, dwelling on it. Like I should have said this. I should have said that. It's like, no, this was wrong. I was in the wrong. I'm going to make a change, whether it be amends or a living amends, however it's going to be. You can't change unless you accept what is wrong. So it, it is possible to move and grow from arrested development. Yeah. Okay. So what are some solutions we can give? Mike brought one up early. I did. Do you acknowledge it? A acknowledge the issue. Yeah. yeah. So recognize that you have been stuck in arrested development and that it is hindering your personal growth and progress. Accept acceptance is the first step towards change. Radical. 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 Acceptance, acceptance is the key to all my problems today. What, what page is that? Page four one seven. What was it in the old one? Do you know? I don't know. I was not really page two fourteen or four. I, I, yeah, yeah. I think it was. It was something. Well, for the one right now, it's page four seventeen. Four one seven. Four one seven. What kind of acceptance? Just regular acceptance, or do they mention radical? It doesn't. It doesn't say radical acceptance in there, but it does say that I have to accept life on life's terms. Mm -hmm. I have to accept the fact that Mike is who he is. It doesn't say Mike, but I have to accept that Mike is who he is and I can't do anything to change him. I need to focus not so much on what needs to be changed in the world as what needs to be changed in me and my attitudes. 
Mm -hmm. How many attitudes do you have? Quite a few. How long you got? How many personalities do you have? Mm, just a few. Jeez, three or four. Three or four. Three or four. No big deal. Three or four. <laughs> Seek professional help. Oh, no. I don't need professional. I don't need a therapist. I love people to tell me that. <laughs> What's therapy going to do? What, am I just going to talk to a guy for an hour? I used to think that way. I used to. I was like, how is this 65-year-old guy know what I'm going through? Shane's not 65. I'm sorry. I just look 75. You look father, but I'm really only 50. You look father time -ish, but yeah. whatever. We love you anyways. But I, that's that's what I was saying. I was like, what is this guy? How is this guy going to relate to me in any way? Hmm. You were a teenager 50 years ago. It's Times have changed a little bit. Just a little. Just slightly, you know? I mean, this was me before. Now it's, you know, I always say, just because you found a therapist does not mean that that has to be your therapist forever. It doesn't? It shouldn't be. It sh well, it shouldn't be, but it's like, it, one, it's like, okay, I got one. It's the end all be all. It's like a sponsor. If it's not working out, maybe you should find another one. Well, not only that, but you could outgrow your therapist and you could outgrow your uh, sponsor. That's that's yeah. the important. Thank you. I mean, well said. Yeah, because you're going to grow yes. as you get through them. It's like they're there through a stage of your life and that's it. Yeah. And when it, so when I tell people this, you have counselors, therapists that are there that are truly trauma therapists, right? They they right. get you at the very beginning. A, a brain surgeon is not the person that walks you through your your physical therapy. Or, you know, your, your surgeon. To. Yeah, it, they're not the ones that do that. They have a specialty. You go to them for this. They stop the bleeding. They stop, you know, they keep you alive and then you move on. And, and so therapy could be that same way, you know, different stages of life call for different therapists. I like that. And so it's okay to outgrow them. I, I sponsor somebody that used to sponsor me. Mm. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. And the only thing that is, is a testament to how well you did. If you outgrow somebody, I mean, that would be the goal is whoever you are sponsoring that they outgrow you. I like that. Yeah, I like that too. So goals, oh, goals. And I want to add a word: achievable. Set achievable goals. Can you spell that, Mike? A C H E I V A B L E. I before E. It is after C. Yeah, I do that every time, man. That's yeah, all right. What are you gonna do? That's okay. So, what's an achievable goal? Okay. Um, so, setting achievable goals. Uh, an achievable goal is something that you can do on a daily basis that you don't really think about. So waking up, brushing your teeth every day, taking a shower every single day, uh, maybe praying when you wake up and before you go to bed. Um, I said this a lot in the rooms was, I know I'm not going to be the president of the United States. I'm not going to set a goal to be the president of the United States. I want, to, I want something that I can achieve on a daily basis because I'm trying to build mastery. Mm. You know what I mean? I want I want things that I can do and get better and better and better and better at as opposed to setting my goals so lofty to where I can't achieve them or maybe they're not going to be on my timeline. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So achievable goals are, you know, uh, talking to another alcoholic or addict every day. I Mikey, would, you could be anything you want to be. Do not sell yourself short. I don't want that job, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I get what you're saying. So smart goals. Smart goals. Yeah. Nothing like nothing outlandish. I mean, don't get me wrong. Big, bigger goals are good to have, but compartmentalize those uh, goals. One word, realistic. Realistic. Yeah. Like a realistic. Achievable. Yeah. Yes, realistic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, and I like the achievable part because that's part of smart specific measurable what is it achievable, achievable. relevant and time time, yeah. time based or timely yeah it, at the beginning i agree just brushing your teeth just taking a shower mm -hmm. those simple things you need to be able to complete goals in order to be able to build build yourself and move forward and then eventually you could do smart goals so setting something that you actually have to work towards yeah. that may take you a week to get to. Mm -hmm. And then you can start taking them out further and you can make a goal to be the president, but now you got to set goals how to get there. Mm -hmm. Right. And if it don't make sense, then hopefully you stop. And I think it's important <laughs> too, to make it in every aspect of your life, like relationships, career, yeah. you know, self care, um, you know, intelligence, like what it, come up with all four of these and put them together. Cause that's who you are. You're an entire person. You're not just defined by one thing, mm -hmm. you know, so. 
Yeah. Um, embrace discomfort. Ooh, yes. <laughs> I think you. Uh, <clears throat> I think you might have skipped one. Yeah, but well, it, because, that kind of goes with the. Yeah. It almost goes with the other one when we take ownership. It it, it really acknowledging the issue because if you're going to acknowledge it, especially out loud like we were talking about, you're taking ownership of it. Yeah. It, as long as you don't pull Shane and do it a blame game. Don't do that, folks. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. It don't. never goes well for you. Well, excuse me. So. <laughs> And I think this encompasses everything. Surround yourself with positive support. 100%. <clears throat> that would be your therapist. That would be my friend group, right? Shane, my mentor. I've got, like, mentor and friend. I've got you as a mentor and friend. You know, I surround myself with people who all want the same thing. And I think that's important. But aren't yes men? Yeah, they'll call me. You'll call me on my my. My, yes. Oh, yeah. In a heartbeat. My right. cow poop. And vice versa. Yeah. yeah I you mean, know. you can't surround yourself with yes men because no. that's not a support system. Mm -hmm. no. That that was whoever was in your life during your mm -hmm. using time that we call codependent. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I mean, I, I, I'll use this example. If I'm having an issue with my wife, I typically don't call you first. She'll call you for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exactly. I hear about it pretty quick. You Smart know? lady. <laughs> but then it's like, I, I know and I know exactly what you're going to tell me. I mean, we had this thing we had this just last week, and it's like he sends me a text, hey, can you talk? And I'm like, ah. Oh. And I knew. I, I knew what it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And it's like I text. I just called him. I was like, dude, I'm already on it. Like, <laughs> I, was like, I was. I really was. I was like, I already know. And he's like, okay, you got you good? You good? I'm like, I'm good. I'm, I'm on it. So. And that's, that's the beauty of having that kind of support. It's like when you're around those people enough, you know what they're going to say, so you can almost do it first. you know. But at the same time, uh, my cousin said this at a meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago when she came in town. She said, I have a, uh, what did I, a built-in, um, a built-in uh, for, forget, oh, what was it? You said it, yeah. Was that? It was, it was a built-in, oh, knock the mic. You said oh. that on Sunday, right? A built-in forgetter. I think it was a built. It was a built-in something. Something about forgetter, though. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. To where it's like we know these things, right? But if we don't, we have to rehear them mm -hmm. because, it, like you just you said it, we change, you know. And some things that are working for us now. I mean, obviously, I always go back to the basics. So if I go back to the basics enough, I'm just gonna re-engage what those basics brought me. Mm -hmm. So hearing the things that we know what we need to do, but hearing them from another person to really hold us accountable, that's that's huge. Yeah, it just sucks, especially when it's me calling, right? It's like, dang it. <laughs> yeah. I really got to hear this guy's voice. I was on a men's retreat. And I was getting and so... Shade I, and I never talk on the phone either. It's always a text. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, you got a minute? You, you got a call, huh? <laughs> I just immediately, when I got that text, I was like, I'm calling him now. And I picked up the phone and called him. Yeah, it's, but that's, I mean, that's what I need in my life. I need yeah. men that, that not only in, a, you know, not only emotionally in my relationships, but spiritually, I need to surround myself with men who are going to challenge me spiritually. Are you praying? Are you reading? Are you journaling? You know, uh, we're about ready to start a Bible study, you know, and, <clears throat> and that's, that's, I need that in my life, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I, I, and I have to make time for that because there's no reason why I shouldn't. You have to make time for it because it's the only way you're going to grow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you said embrace the discomfort, and we, we glossed over that really quick. But that's the only way we grow, too, is being – we have to be willing to be uncomfortable in order to grow. Mm -hmm. We don't grow in comfort. No. I mean, when we're young, when we're growing, it hurts. They call them growing pains. Your knees hurt. Your, I mean, everywhere you – it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. That's when we grow. Mm -hmm. So, And I use the analogy of, 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 of a of – a, a football player, right? If a football player just went and lifted 125, 145 pounds on a bench every single day, he would never get bigger, never get stronger. So you have to push that muscle to exhaustion, you know, keep growing, keep adding, keep growing, keep adding. And that's the same thing with us mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Mm -hmm. Like we have to put ourselves in those uncomfortable positions. My DOC used to be more, now it's more in a healthy way. Yeah. You know? It's it's that that those achievable goals start them start them low and then get bigger and bigger and bigger and get more and more and more and celebrate know? the wins. 
Yeah, like, absolutely. That's, I know it's I don't know if it's on here, but <clears throat> you have to celebrate the victors. Mm -hmm. You know, little or big. Right. I mean, all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's that's what I love about celebrate recovery. One of them is about celebrating yeah. those victories, and yeah, there's nothing greater. Mm -hmm. I, I don't agree. I don't care if it's about harm reduction. <laughs> the guy that the guy that oh, let's not that go said, there. The guy that said, "Look, I quit opiates," and so he celebrated his blue chip, and then he came back, got his thirty days, but then he came back up and did the alcohol. So yeah. celebrating the little things led to the bigger. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So yeah, S go ahead. I know what you're gonna say. self care. Oh no, I was gonna. Mm -hmm. We kind of touched on that a little yeah. bit with with the goal setting. Mm -hmm. you know? I was gonna mm -hmm. go straight to stay committed. Oh man, yeah. See, and I like to self care, but I like staying committed. But self care journaling growing a beard like not touching a razor to your face for i don't know 30 45 days something yeah like something that. like that yeah. yeah look growing a beard is a is a great thing it is a beautiful <laughs> you know why it's patchy because your head's so big so you need to give it extra time to grow in i don't have enough follicles on my head <laughs> i used to think people said well you have a receding hairline it's like no i I don't. That's I don't, just my I giant. I don't dome. have enough scalp for my head. <laughs> <laughs> See, Mike, I never looked at you and said, you, man, he's got a ginormous head. I know, but you're going to notice it now. You will. The only reason I notice now is because when you put it on your big melon, yeah. the thing fell down. Yeah. Like oh, it was yeah. a cowboy hat. What I'm going to love is when pe this episode comes out and people at work listen to it, they're going to be staring at your head. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you see that thing? You know what we should do? We should take him to um, Texas Roadhouse in Wentzville. There's a guy out there that wears a hat that's way too big for him. So he does look like the guy off of um, Beetlejuice. They got the, <laughs> the powder put on his head. So we could put you guys side by side. We have a big head and a little head. For everybody out there, I'm not like John Merrick. I'm not the elephant man. <laughs> I just have a large, large head. I just... Never noticed. Yeah. So, so we have learn from setbacks, celebrate progress, which we touch, and then staying committed. Yes. Yeah, because there is going to be a uh, the the journey that you are embarking on in recovery is completely worth it. You know, I mean, yeah. it's 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 a thousand times better than the life that you were living before, hands down. And I, the reason that people stop and go back and relapse and 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 use is because they have to face these, uh, those those emotions that they've arrested for so long, mm -hmm. and they don't want to deal with everything. And I promise, I mean, and we could all guarantee, because you said it last week, you know, 100% of the people that go to treatment will make it, and 100% of the people that go to treatment won't make it. And it's the same thing with recovery. If you commit to this 100%, you will get through this. You will be successful, and you will love life. Yes. Embrace the suck. Embrace the yes. suck. Embrace the suck. All right, let me go put the shirt on. I didn't wear it again. Oh, you did. Embrace the suck. I was like, no, I, I, one day you already we're have all a shirt have, on. Yeah, we're all gonna have shirts on that that are, have a message. Yes. Yeah, we just need people to do it. Um, this is true. Any closing remarks before I read from Romans? How about I read from Romans and then we have? Yeah, to read from Romans. Dig it. Uh, Romans 12, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, I love this next part. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has dist distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so it is in Christ. We, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. There it is. That's, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just so mean. I'm already showing mercy. Why show do I mercy have to cheerfully. do it cheerfully? cheerfully? Yeah. <laughs> you wronged me, and I feel hurt, <clears> but <throat> I'm going to... Show you mercy. Also, don't patronize. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. <laughs> you, uh, 
it's fine. Yeah. Don't worry about it. But hey, that's the that's the one piece that always it's always got me from the very beginning. I'm like, all the others make sense all the way down. Yeah. And then if you're gonna be mer you know merciful, do it cheerfully. Teach, mm -hmm. teach, encourage, encourage. You know. And then it's like, no. If when you're gonna show mercy, yeah. you don't. You do not get to be a condescending. <laughs> don't be condescending. What it is? Yeah. You know, it's it's. But that's Jesus for you, right? Is that is a little Jesus. So, do it, do it well. Awesome. Well, you know what? This has been a, a kind of a condensed version of what we talked about on Sunday, but I think it's uh, it still gets our our point across. Yeah. So. And it's going to give people an answer to why they have been the way they have been for so right. long. Right. Um, I never knew what it was called for years, but we just said, hey, you know, when these things happen, your brain quits growing or, you know, emotionally, you just don't develop. And that's why a lot of us still act like little kids because we started drinking or using at a young age and we've only got a few years in sobriety. So, <laughs> I mean, what am I, 18 now, I guess? Um, 19 years old? Well, no, because if I went off to traumas, wasn't that really? Yeah. I started drinking at eight and the traumas happened before that. So. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. Maybe I'm pretty young. <laughs> so when I act like a big baby, you could probably vote at this point. Nah, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. Don't give this guy a pen and paper and tell him to vote. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't give a pen and paper. A pen. But we have the best pens. We the do. best sponsor, Tactile Turn. Mm -hmm. Because I, I love giving writing assignments. It's my favorite thing in the world to do. Mm -hmm. um, everything that gets given to me, and I don't know if colby can because he mentioned using digital that's gonna yeah, be hard for me to, to accept yeah yep. um but i will for him but everybody else has to write and so if you're gonna write why not have something good to write with tactile turn boy you got a few of them now i do got you hooked i am i am hooked i'm next you will be hooked you will be yeah and yeah. so we'll have a discount code so that way people can get them because if you're gonna write write with something good yeah go ahead and check out their website though tech tactile turn Dot com. Yeah, they are unbelievable. And yes, they are a little expensive, but they have a lifetime warranty. Made any problem America, I've ever had. America. Yeah. Any problem I've ever had, they just fix. And the owner is fantastic. And it's they're they're well well worth your patronage. You should patron them. Matter of fact, is that a word? Patron? <clears throat> should you pat patronize? No, huh? don't patronize. Yeah, don't patronize. No, wait, wait. Will's too good of a person. Don't patronize. Beep, beep, beep. Him. Buy, I don't know. I, buy I'm... their product. <laughs> Let's put it this way. Will, I found out whenever I reached out to him. He's also in recovery. We're going to have him on the show. Yeah, that's going to yeah, be awesome. Yeah, I can't wait. That's yeah. going to be sweet. And we'll eventually put a link up there and everything else. So this yeah, is but... all new news to us. So Yeah. Good, exciting stuff. Without a doubt. So anything else? The good for the whole? Gentlemen, have a good week. I'll see you Sunday. Yeah. I will see you Sunday. Hey, God bless you guys. Glad that you're here. And we will see you soon. Blessings. See ya.